If the Baltimore Ravens get this done, then this season will truly be considered a success. But what exactly is it that we're referring to? Well, before we get into it, make sure you leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button. It takes less than half a second. And also subscribe to the channel so you do not miss not a single video. And turn the notifications on so YouTube can let you know when we upload. So, Adam Rank. He did a state of the franchise for every single team in the league. And, of course, we're about to go over what he had to say about the Baltimore Ravens. Let's listen to how he got started. He said, members of the organization, Ravens fans around the world, and those who are finally getting the bad taste out of their mouths from the AFC Championship game, of course. He said, thanks to Gunnar Henderson. So, shout out to all you O's fans, baseball fans out there. I know the O's been doing pretty good. But, anyway, he said, listen. And I know it's not great to start a conversation with, listen, but here we are. 2023 was a solid year for the Ravens, real solid. They got a full season out of Lamar Jackson, which resulted in him being crowned as league MVP for the second time. They won the AFC North and secured a first round bye in the playoffs. They soundly beat the Texans, and then, man, they got bounced by the Chiefs, a fate many AFC contenders know all too well at this point. Yeah, that's true. He says, so will the Ravens finally be able to clear that final hurdle this year and get back to the Super Bowl? Let's take a look. So that was his introduction. And I really want to hear from y'all if y'all agree with what he considers to be a successful season for the Baltimore Ravens this year. What his criteria for the Ravens to have a successful season this year is y'all let me know if you are with him or you're not. So he talked about the brain trust. So he went through all the head coach or the head coach, the general manager, of course, Harbaugh and Eric DeCosta, and went through all the coordinators. He talked about different players who the Baltimore Ravens added, different players who they lost. He talked about new faces that you need to know. So we don't need to go over all that because y'all know about all that. He talked about the state of the quarterback room. He said the most important non-QB position. He mentioned Justin Matabike for that, by the way. Uh, he gave you a nice hot take, but but here's where it gets good. He said, for 2024 to be a success, the Ravens must, A, win the Super Bowl, B, make a playoff run, C, earn a playoff berth, D, finish above 500, E, show progress. So, with how the Baltimore Ravens have been, with how they are, I think I know what all of y'all would choose for the Ravens season to be a success, but let's see what he had to say. He said, my answer, A, win the Super Bowl. So he's saying for the 2024 to be a success for the Baltimore Ravens, they have to win the Super Bowl. Me, I said this last year. Some of y'all agreed. Some of y'all disagreed. Now, the reason I said that last year, in my opinion, it was a failure. It was a failure. It was like a success and a failure all at the same time. Success because obviously regular season, they did their thing. They got the number one seed. They were the best team in the league by far. It was clear that they were the best team in the league. They were doing their thing. They got home field advantage. They literally got everything that they wanted. Everything lined up perfectly for the Baltimore Ravens last year. And they took it. They earned it. They deserved it because they made it happen. They went, what, 14-3 and three last year? They just crushed it. And then even in the playoffs, they started off a little bit slow in that first playoff game. But in that second half, they made the adjustments and they came out swinging like crazy. But then, of course, in the AFC Championship game at the crib with the best team in the league with a really good bill of health overall, they came up short. And even though they only lost by seven points, it felt like they lost by a whole lot more. But in my opinion, I said last season was a failure. It was a failure because when you have everything literally lined up for you like that and you're the best team in the league, you got home field advantage in the playoffs. So every single game, every single game had to go through Baltimore. So you got home field advantage. Like you got to take advantage of that. And they didn't. They came up short. They came up short in a major way at the biggest stage of the game. So they failed. Yeah, they made progress this past season with the offense and with the team overall. They made some strides, but – they came up short in the biggest stage, and that was a failure. So let me know if you agree with what Adam Rank had to say, that the only way that this season can be a success is if they win the Super Bowl. Here's how he followed that up. He said, uh, there really is no other box to check. The Ravens were so impressive in the 2023 regular season because they basically outclassed all of the good teams that were in their way. See, I didn't even think about that, too. That's another good point. All them playoff teams that they played in the regular season, they were dogging them. For the majority, they were dogging them. They were just beating them. But they were, most of them wasn't even close. But anyway, continuing. He said, it wasn't like some of those squads that fatten up on the sub-500 set and then try to squeak out wins against contenders like the Miami Dolphins. Uh, the Ravens obliterated powerhouses like the Lions and the 49ers. They dropped 56 points on the Dolphins. They rolled, but once again, everything soured with a postseason defeat, this time at home against the Chiefs. Baltimore has to win the Super Bowl. 
or this season can't be considered a success. Most Raven fans will agree the Orioles have a little bit of wiggle room, but not the Ravens. It's all or nothing. Do you all agree with what he had to say? Because I do wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, like a million percent. If Ravens do not win the Super Bowl this year, it's a failure. It's a failure, and they have had several failures over the past couple of years uh, as a team, as a franchise. I will say 2023 is certainly a huge failure for sure, but also 2019. 2019, the Baltimore Ravens were set up the same way. Same way. They ran through the league. They went 14-2, and two, went crazy with it. It was like, all right, let's go. Number one seed, home field advantage, bye week in the playoffs. And they came out flat. And they continue to do this thing. Uh, when they have the best teams that they had, when they had the best teams in the league, they do this thing where they decide, you know what? Everything that worked to get us here, we are going to go directly against it. It failed in 2019. And we were thinking, all right, they learned their lesson in 2020. They didn't do that. And then 2021, you know, people got hurt. And then 2022 is injuries too. But 2023 is like, all right, we back. It's going to be, we've got a fresh slate, clean slate. Let's do it. Let's fix this. And then that, the Texans game, hey, it looked like we righted our wrongs. But then, of course, in the AFC Championship, they went all back to doing that same old garbage. So, Adam Rank, even though I know he was somebody last year, if y'all remember him, he picked so many games for the Ravens to lose last year. And obviously for the majority of his picks, he was wrong because I think he had the Ravens going like nine and eight, some something, something crazy like that. But obviously that didn't matter. But you got to agree with him. You got to agree with him. Ravens have done everything. They've done everything. They've had teams with a, they have the number one offense. They've had the number one defense. Obviously, Lamar Jackson, two-time MVP. The only thing left for them to do is win the Super Bowl in this era. Now, I know you done clicked the thumbs up button in the video already. You done left your like, which is cool. But if you didn't, make sure you do that. But before we move further, we got to give a special shout out to the Team Keep It Clean patrons. If you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash And if you don't want to, that's okay. And also a special shout out to all our Team Keep It Clean channel members. Those are the people you see in the comment section with that beautiful, pretty star next to their name. So shout out to all of y'all for showing extra support. I, I really, really appreciate y'all. And special shout out to my guy, Harold, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron. And he said, this question he said what's up engraving it's your boy raven pride just hope the whole fam is doing well hey we doing real real good my friend i appreciate you hope you're doing even better he said just wanted to piggyback off a video you posted about brandon Ayuk. he needs to understand that wide outs in this league don't receive qb1 pay <laughs> they do now they, they they do now like it may be not it ain't 50 60 million dollars a year but they they hit in the 30s now so anyway, continue. He said he isn't Tyreek Hill or Odell in his prime. He has to show out more in the big game. So I think he should stay at the 49ers and get the results he needs to get the big money from the 49ers or somewhere else. Much love the team. Keep it clean. Like, look, I see what you're saying. But if you're eligible to get paid uh, you, you, and you've been putting up nice numbers, too, in the regular season and been helping your team a lot and y'all been successful, too. Oh, man, that's a recipe for success right there. Like, so I'm not mad at him trying to get his bread. Whether he get it from the 49ers, he get it from somewhere else, he is going to get paid. He's going to get paid. And right now what he's been doing is everything to try to put pressure on the 49ers to give him his money. And if not, hey, trade me to somebody who will. And another question came from another Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Derek. He said, hey, Graven, what's going on, man? How you feeling? Hey, I'm good. I'm really good. I hope you feeling even better than I'm feeling because that will mean you feeling great. But he said, I hope all is well, my brother with the family and the dogs, LOL. Hey, yeah, shout out to our dogs. The, the Golden Retriever and the Pomeranian. They can be very, especially the Pomeranian. It's like the, the small dogs be the loudest. Anyway, he said, um, he said, they are part of the family. You're right. He said, anywho, let me dive right into the purple sea of questions. Okay, if you can have two of the four to happen out of these. Uh oh, okay, let's see. He said, and how would it impact the team based on your decision? Okay. Number one, so two out of the four. Number one, David Ajabo to have a breakout year the way Michael Parsons did for Dallas. Ooh, hoo, 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 that would be nice. Okay, number two, Nate Wiggins to have a Sauce Gardner like rookie season the way Sauce did. Okay, to so a lock up. But I get called for a lot of holding calls. I mean, anyway, number three, Rashad Bateman to go over 1,000 yards or more. Ooh, okay, babe. Number four, Derrick Henry to have 1,400 to 1,600 yards and 15-plus touchdowns. Now, I'm assuming you're saying total yards, not rushing yards, but you might. So, um, which one of those? Uh, if I could have two out of the four, I would say 
David Ajabo to have a breakout year the way Michael Parsons did for Dallas because that would allow our pass rush to just be insane. Uh, if David Ajabo went crazy like that, and that would make just life easier for Baltimore Ravens defense overall, make life easier for Zach Orr as a defensive coordinator, and that would mean more plays are being made by David Ajabo, more sack strips, or strip sacks, I mean, and that would mean he just went crazy with it. So that would be my number one. Number two, I would probably say for Derrick Henry um, to have 1,400 to 1,600 yards and 15-plus touchdowns because that would mean that Derrick Henry he was back or he never left actually because there have been some conversations about Derrick Henry possibly being older and his age affecting his play um, and how good or great he could possibly be but that would shut down all of that immediately if he got 1400 1600 total yards and he got a uh, uh, 15 plus touchdown oh yeah Derrick Henry that would mean he will be being utilized in the regular season even though there ain't no question that he's going to be utilized in the regular season we don't fear that the thing that we scared of is what they're going to do come playoff time how these Baltimore Ravens are going to operate uh in the postseason that's our biggest question and our biggest fear so those would be the two that I would choose. Now, the reason that I would not choose the other two, I mean, hey, if all four happened, great. But the reason I chose those two instead of Nate Wiggins to have a sauce garden like rookie season the way sauce did, I feel like it's because there's not that much pressure on Nate Wiggins to have a season like that because he's a rookie. The Baltimore Ravens have a Marlon Humphrey. They have a Brandon Stevens. They have an Arthur Millette. They have a Kyle Hamilton. They have a Marcus Williams. They have an Aldarius Washington. What I mean when I say that, they have a lot of players in the secondary right now. The secondary has some nice, nice, nice depth. And with Nate Wiggins, we expect him to be on the field a lot, but I don't think he'll be an official starter as of yet. He'll be in the mix a lot, but there's a lot less pressure on him to go out there and just be locked down from jump. Now, if he is, great, but there's a lot less pressure. It's not like he needs to come in and be locked down right away. If he is, great, but in my opinion, I don't think it's a requirement of him right here, right now to just put the straps on all these receivers from jump. He, he should, and it'd be great if he does, but I don't think it's a requirement in order for the Baltimore Ravens to have success this season. And that's the same exact way I feel about Rashad Bateman going over 1,000 yards. Now, I know I look at last year. I look at last year because Rashad Bateman, he ain't even touch 1,000 yards last year. Well, obviously. And the Ravens were extremely successful. Now, this season is a bit different because Odell Beckham Jr., he ain't there no more. So it'll be more pressure on Rashad Bateman he should be involved a lot more in the offense but the reason why I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't didn't pick that one is because it's the same way with Nate Wiggins I don't feel like Rashad Bateman having a, over a thousand yards is a requirement for the Baltimore Ravens success it would be nice and we would love it and again I expect Rashad Bateman to still do good this year as long as he stays healthy then he should be in some good shape but I don't feel like that's a requirement in order for the Baltimore Ravens to be successful. Now, if he does get over 1,000 yards, I think the Baltimore Ravens would be even more successful. But I don't think it's a requirement in order for them to be a good team this year.